गुड मॉर्निंग दामोदर एंड शरद गुड मॉर्निंग सर बहुत वेरी गुड वेरी गुड माय फ्रेंड वेरी वेलकम एंड ग्रीटिंग्स फ्रॉम माउंट साइनाई न्यूयॉर्क मॉर्निंग टाइम एंड इवनिंग देयर एंड ऑफ कोर्स आई कीप ट्रैकिंग द कोविड अमेरिका कोविड इज गेटिंग बेटर इंडिया आई थिंक स्टेबल Uh, I don't know what uh, your right. feeling in your cities are, but uh, uh, clearly we had a big hit. I'm sitting in. I'm sitting in front of you with cold, <laughs> <laughs> running wow, but, temperature and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean that, See, that is truly. Now they are talking about the new combination of the COVID with Omicron coming out from India. I don't know what that is. Who knows? Uh, some some new name. But I think this is going to stay with us. We had to have our uh, life uh, around it, and uh, this is part of our educational mission. Myself, Dr. Kini, on my right side, and uh, our fellows and the Cat Lab staff, uh, along with imaging fellows, all are here uh, to show a very case. It's not a very complex, but will highlight many of the uh, operational point of view when we deal with the calcific lesions. So, with that note. If okay, we start here. Uh, show the yeah, first please. slide, please. Yeah. So this uh, we thank to uh, Sun Pharma for uh, this uh, educational support, and uh, at present this is our episode number fifteen. So clearly these are our disclosures, and uh, both uh, Sharath Reddy and okay. Damodar Reddy, we welcome you uh, from Mount Sinai, and both of you doing a great job. Uh, Medicover Hospital in Hyderabad, uh, uh, bringing the center, bringing the interventional cardiology uh, at, at your individual level, at the national level, and international. Uh, clearly, the India represent quite a big now in the interventional scenario. We have surpassed India, has surpassed Japan now as a number two, around five hundred thousand. And I'm sure with NIC in the next three months, we'll know what exactly the new numbers are. Uh, America being about eight hundred fifty. um india now a 500000 pci is and japan around 400 uh, so really uh, country wise thank all our great interventionists from india uh, who are very dedicated and methodical so today our case is the oct guided pci of the calcific led diagonal bifurcation using ivl and uh, if necessary rotational arthrectomy and then we have the case discussion by iwas guided multi vessel pci and rcs cto pci uh, by both uh, you uh, sharad and damodar with of course the discussion so this case uh, actually presented uh, last november with new onset angina she has multiple comorbid conditions which you can see the risk factors on the left side including residual cva asthma Uh, and uh, that time we had angina with a stress test found to have two vessel disease lv was good multiple medical therapy as you can see there and uh, patient uh, dr kini did uh, at that time two stents in the right coronary artery uh, and now today uh, is for the led now you can see here show the uh, fluoro uh, angio please yeah so edp was normal EF, which is also normal. Very calcific MAC. <laughs> yeah, MAC, and then actually LV gram probably is uh, one of the um, angiovac. Actually, you can see the calcium. So if you want to look at the calcium on the LAD, yeah. um, you see proximal and mid. It's not tram track, but at least I would say um, moderate to severe calcium there in the LAD. And this is where we are with RCA. The stand looks good, and this is the left system. circumflex which is a uh, non obstructive and this is where we are with the led so before the dye goes in you do see calcium in the led it's like actually i That's i would say it will be between moderate, moderate to, to severe, severe. you yes. see not severe, both uh, not very you know i still say since it's on the both the walls and of course we'll do the oct in this particular case and then there is a diagonal as you can see there uh, there is small diagonals we invo if you know though are irrespective so second diagonal or main diagonal we should call it d1 uh, is involved little bit about 70 80% at the ostium mid led the segment goes through proximal to mid led 70 to 80% moderate to severe calcified and uh, we are ready to hear wire and do the oct uh, so while getting ready let me finish our presentation um, let's go back to the slides please while we will do the live oct 
in this particular case. So as we mentioned that this is a, a case will be uh, imaging guided complex stage PCI of the calcific LAD D1 bifurcation using IVL. So this one we said that let's use the IVL as a primary modality which is available now in India also although cost is quite high. And then OCT we decide uh, calcium is deep, superficial, nodule and so. Uh, in terms of OCK which we always present, this patient is a uh, one vessel disease and it's into the, uh, that time patient multivessel disease. Now if you do a stress test may be mild, so it still will be A category whether you call it a, uh, because of the LED involvement uh, in this particular uh, case as you can see here uh, and patient is on multi uh, double medical therapy. So just to say our protocol for patients, uh, sorry, why this? Um, yeah, so this is where we go with that if you have moderate to severe calcium and it's the, the imaging can be done, we know that many of the cases imaging cannot be done. Uh, almost half of them because of the long tortuosity and I know so a lot of people will push imaging catheter but I say in those cases modify the plaque and then do the imaging if necessary. So this is the case uh, will be in the left side that decide or based on the IVAS and OCT assessment we are doing the OCT today and basically when you have a high points means high calcium arc more than 270 calcium length more than uh, 5 millimeter or thickness more than 0.5 all gives each one, uh, one to two points and based on that you decide what to do. Low calcium score can have a, a high pressure balloon dilatation or maybe cutting balloon but higher one uh, you definitely require in those cases maybe lithotripsy or if it's a circular calcium probably rotational atherectomy orbital is not available. Calcific nodule also the same thing but and also at the same time in the complex lesion I always say that do the atherectomy first and if you need to do imaging then you do and of course you decide after that if there's a suboptimal balloon expansion then you bring IVL in the equation. So Anu you are ready now? Yeah so we are ready with the OCT. Okay let's go back to the floral. Uh, we are ready for the OCT uh, live imaging of the OCT and with the uh, with Kiski will be doing a interpretation, yes. Any question, Sharad and uh, Damodar? Uh, not, uh, nothing, sir. So for, I think yeah. it's a um, <coughs> right case with the calcium in the proximal LED and uh, mild diagonal disease. Yeah. And yes, it is not tram track calcium, but uh, once you put ima ima anywhere, fluoro is less sensitive. So what imaging shows, uh, you know, uh, it really guides us, you know, what we can do further. It's ready. Yes, sir. Good image. So I'm checking. So now, uh, Anu, uh, what about a uh, lot of people talk about high creatinine that you do without uh, without the dye? Yeah. Can we do the OCT without dye? I mean, I know there have been uh, certain uh, case report studies uh, doing it with dye, but I think they're moving away from that. Okay. Uh, since uh, the image interpretation... Sorry, doing it again. So, uh, we, uh, you know, we look at the creatinine clearance, and as long okay. as it's about 60... We are able to do that. Uh, we don't have to do multiple runs. If you can do one pre for diagnostic and one post at the end, we should be okay. 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 Let's okay, do the interpretation. Tell us, uh, yes, show the uh, OCT. Yeah. You are doing, doing the angio correlation. Have you got the image? Okay. Uh, courage. Good correlation. I will start from the distal part. Oh, this part, not uh, not much plug. Uh, this white dot is a cross section. I go to proximal. Uh, this is the level of the uh, septal. I go to the proximal. Yeah, I can see the like eccentric, like thick calcium, and go to proximal. Yeah, here. Yeah, this is the area. Yeah, this yeah. is the tell us uh, what is the arc of calcium in this area and the depth, yeah, length, depth, and arc. Yeah, yeah, I can see the 360 Ooh. calcium and the thick calcium. So 360. 360. Yeah, and mm. the depth, uh, depth is also more than 0 0.5. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, and deep length. calcium. Length, Probably. Uh, yeah, go to proximal. Yeah, here's also calcium. Wow. Yeah, here's a calcium. So yeah, length is also to. more than five millimeter. The calcium score is uh four, so we need a at least a three. So this is a so score came out four. Yeah. So now uh, both uh, 
Dr. Sharath and Dr. Damodar, in this case, having this information, the full calcific arc, uh, our calcium score by OCT comes out to be four. Uh, should the question comes here that do we do a atherectomy, rotation atherectomy, and then plus minus IVL, or just go with IVL and see? What will what would you do in your practice there? Uh, since uh, calcium here is looking, you know, more of medial, if I am correct, so. Uh, and there is a good space uh, in the coronary. So I think it's a reasonable idea to go ahead directly with IVL rather than uh, doing, you know, rotablation followed by IVL. What do you think? Uh, Three, five. Damodar, yeah. your point? Yeah. 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 I think IVL will be a good choice. Yeah? Okay. So I know that usual, our usual teaching will be go with the rota and then use the IVL, but I think in this case is a reasonable, uh, knowing that uh, uh, the new technology, which is simpler, can it serve the same purpose. So we'll go with IVL, and exactly that's what we announced. IVL plus minus rota, it would have been a very uh, concentric uh, or very thick calcium, more than one millimeter or so. I'm, do it. What do you think, right? I mean, I think there's still not a 360 degree. Why are we saying 360? I think it's about 300 uh, degree no, here, calcium. Here, yes, yes. Uh, despite, here is 360 yes. saying. Exactly. Okay, this is 360. At the level of the diag, mm -hmm. now I'm yeah. just trying to see when we place the IVL, uh, you know. What is the vessel size? Yeah, because vessel no. size has to be 1 to 1. I think 3 will be good. Yeah, no, this, we are taking 3 5. No, no, 3 IVL. Three no, 3 IVL, should you have what a 3.5? Yeah, this size is 3 yeah. Now we can go, no, it's 4 atmosphere. No, but what is the vessel size there? Uh, this style LED is 3 ohm. Flux is 3.5. No, but at this area? No, see, where you have 360 concentration. 360 is degree calcium, diag, that's where we need. The diag. So because of the calcium, we cannot see the EEL, but like mm. here. And we can encourage our audience also to ask the question okay, in the three chat. Five, three five. Uh, yeah, it's 3.5. Three okay. Huh? Three five. The okay. At the level, at the level of the diag. And yes. that's where the... the highest know, calcium is. Okay. And we can take a 3.5 20 high pressure balloon also. I don't think And then 2.5 cutting balloon. No, we eh? should not go to the distal LED after the no. diag. We we'll no, no. do just <coughs> the proximal yeah, that's point. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. So we decided now it's a 3.5. The cost is the same, what there is equivalent. It's about $4,500 here also. Uh, about 3.5. Uh, it's about 3.5 yeah. lakh so, rupees there. Yeah. I have one, one, one uh, question, sir, about, you know, sizing of the balloon. Yeah. So, are we taking a kind of, uh, here it's difficult to see EEM in OCT. Uh, whatever sizing 3.5, almost it covered entire calcium from one end to the other end. So, is it that, you know, how we size or is it the distal reference uh, with which we size? No. So, I think the IVL is the to be effective. You want to have a one-to-one -one sizing and sizing at the site of the tightest lesion. Uh, lesion, of course, the lumen will be much smaller. So, vessel is 3.5, lumen is 2. So, then you go with the 3.5, not go with the 2 IVL. So, key the lumen at the size at the site of your stenosis because that's where you get the best uh, uh, with the cracking of the calcium and the shock you directly to the wall. Can you go back to that uh, where we measured 3.5 or keys keys so we can explain again? Okay, so I show you that this is the uh, tightest part uh, of the... Uh, I mean, I decided based on the angiogram, but you can explain, go back to that place and show that uh, calcium arc. Yeah, so, yeah uh, okay, so arc is uh, like here, like almost 360 calcium. And I would try yeah, to... It, uh, yeah, and this side, yes. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I also try to find a good lesion to see the EEL to EEL, but I cannot the like concentric EEL. But here I can see the EEL like uh, nine o'clock, and this part I cannot okay. see. But at least EEL should be after the behind the calcium, and here to here the OCT show the length is like three point six, so the vessel size is at least more than three point five at the uh, tightest part. So what we'll do is yeah. we'll keep it four atmosphere yeah. only. We won't go to six. You know sometimes uh, yeah. the four then you go to rarely go to eight but in this case we'll keep it only at four and then we'll do yeah. the, IVL, the oct after, this, after this to see yeah. that what uh, the ivl has done i know a lot of papers have been that it caused the crack in the calcium uh, and so fractures and so let's see 
and the other reason why we went back to OCT and uh, Coreg actually helps here to know exactly where we need to place so that we should be done with at least uh, um, two, no more than three runs so that we will not cause ischemia. Yep. So I'm going okay. with the balloon at the level of the dial. Good. Okay. Crossed. Everybody agrees here? Yep. Okay. okay. Go up yeah. four atmospheres. Okay. I'm going first. Three, four. Three, three four. is good. Yeah. Four. Okay, there you are. Okay, good. good. Go. Start. Go. Press. Yeah, keep pressing there. I mean, I can tell you this, the way this simplified IVL. Okay, so probably it, has, need it more. has cracked. Yeah. Okay. You did not. You have to document. Huh? Yeah. You want to go down. No, but we have to go back again. Just same yes. place. Yeah. No, no, no. So I'm going again. Four atmosphere. And then we have to pull back. Yeah, now opened up die nicely. Go. I don't need. The more simpler, this kind. I know many companies are involved now to coming up with a new IVL type of uh, device. Okay, Top down, done. Down. Then we pull back a little bit. Now, there are some PVCs, which is not uncommon. Uh, that was reported, although you know, uh, harm, not harm, harmful, which uh, uh, even in the trial, disrupt to CAD3. Okay, Go. you see it. Four. Keep it four only. Yeah. It's open nicely. Your balloon ready, right? Yeah, good. And then we put a fielder and two over 2.25 cutting balloon okay, on the good. side branch. Good. Do you need to do proximal? No, which one? Here, here. Then we have to yes, put a stand there, right? Okay. No need. There is the no moderate. Yeah. Up to the Was there a time. disease? Okay. So yeah. there was definitely, so going again for atmosphere here. Okay, go. But you have to pull back then. Okay, stop. Yeah, there's definitely a calcium. See that? Preventing the yeah. uh, balloon expansion, even proximally where there looks like a 30% lesion. On the OCT, where's the proximal uh, edge of the normal, normal part of the vessel? So Is it at uh, the level of the first septum? The, yeah, before the first septum. Okay, it's there. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Going up. Yes, you could feel that. Okay. Okay, again four. Here, if you want, we can go to six. Yeah. yeah definitely, this one is a big vessel there, 3.75 and so. So, right now, I'm six atmosphere and maybe, we're delivering maybe over. Maybe some EKG changes here now. Yeah. There's the shock wave. Yeah. yeah. Down. We're coming out, so we. Ventricular dependence, which was reported. Good. We can take this out. We gave five <coughs> runs. That's good. Yep. Okay. Take a picture. Just a question for the sake of audience. Sir. Yes. See, this patient had a, uh, I think, significant side branch. Uh, do you think if you do uh, rotablation, Wire. does mm -hmm. it help anyway in uh, reducing the diagonal osteal compromise? Compromise, definitely. Yes. Yes, definitely. Now, those data we are don't have for the IVL, whether IVL decrease the side branch closure. We published our paper back in 2001 good. Uh, about the rotational threctomy, uh, decreasing the side branch closure in the calcific vessel intervention. You now see, the, definitely there's plaque shift in the diag. Yeah, let's put a wire now. We'll put a now, my question is, uh, are we happy or should we go back again in the mid LED uh, or we just try to see with the balloon? Uh, but anyway, that do we need to expand a little more? Because here, it's still narrowing there. Uh, but no, we never yeah. went there. Yeah. We never went there. No, no, we are talking about exactly level of the diamo. That we covered. Second diamo. Below that, is, yeah. that we covered. All right. I think we can do an imaging and we see covered. the cracks yeah. in calcium. Yeah. Then if yeah. required, probably we can redo again. Yeah. So, we question is, do you want to do OCT now? Yes. Before putting the wire into the diagonal, let's just do the OCT first then. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Leave it. Yeah. Let's do, since we already have OCT. Yeah. All right. OCT run. Hopefully we do this and then one will be in the end. After stenting. Good. Okay, so we are going with a pa second run. Uh, for the sake of younger audience, sir, so 
whenever we are trying to assess you know calcium breaks uh, post arthrectomy uh, it's always better to do imaging without a second wire in once yeah, the second wire is right. in you will totally misunderstand imaging that is correct that's why we did not put the diagonal wire yet you are absolutely correct <clears throat> if so much reverberation and things will happen yeah good oxygen of the calibrating okay do you see and check the yeah we got right yeah it's ready will yes good image yeah i can even see the clock this fast pull back all right let's do the co registration see exactly those area which is the circular calcium was close to 360 degrees do the co registration first let's wire now well, but you read this first yeah let's see exactly what has happened there so uh, we can see pre post or no no but let's see this one first that uh, have we decreased the depth of the calcium no, no. or have we created any fracture yeah, yeah. have we cracked it it looks definite fractures are there so show that this moment please so now coagulation doing okay please wait for co registration wow happen moment okay accept all right yeah i'll show you the from the distal oh, yeah wow. this is the not uh calcified part go to plaques not yeah i can see the uh like a lot of uh dissection this is the border of the calcified plaque and fibrous oh. plaque and go to plaques now <laughs> but uh, it's yeah, just yeah. around the calcium look at this multiple yeah. uh, here this it's is, broken this is the 360 yeah. part yeah deep plaque broken. deep flexion one two volcanic flaction. eruption yeah. at the 360 yeah. part good yeah Earthquake. Huh? Yeah, here's also like one, two, three uh, fracture. <coughs> okay, so that actually, I would say that by all purposes, uh, IVL has done its job, yeah. and I don't think we need yes. to go further. It, once you crack the cal arc, then it's perfectly fine. Check the distal length again. So still mm -hmm. three. I think three o. Good. <clears throat> Let's get the cutting balloon first, right? You want to dilate the lady? Yeah, but because uh, this portion we did not. So where are we stenting? Okay, From there crash, all right? the way, right? Yeah. Okay, so I open the lady first. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. do you want? Three o there. Three o. We are three o. Three o twenty. We have. Uh, we are dilating the means uh, almost uh, distal part of the lady where we never went with the. Which we are going to stand, like but we zero. never went yeah. uh, okay. with the uh, IVL balloon. Yeah, this is the three five. After, after the diag. Yeah, yeah, after the diag. Yeah. Okay. Remember the mid to yeah. distal, the distal LED where it's f going further down. So we are going with the that level is three O LED. So we are going to go with the three O twenty. No, this is three point five button. actually. But let's see, original was, uh -huh. but the moderate pressure. Let's see, it should open low pressure. We won't go high. But. We need to make sure the audience will know to go there with Maybe, the 3-0 yeah. balloon. Yeah. yeah. I want them to go with the 3-5 balloon think... in that part of the lady. Yeah. No, but low pressure, 3.5. You know, originally when we started the uh, rotation attack, we used to put a 4-0 balloon at one atmosphere in all the vessels. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let's say that low, but you know, that whole uh, But the story. correct teaching is that 1-to-1, one one, one when one. a calcific lesion, 1-to-1, one yeah. one, and <clears> then go high pressure, 20-22 yeah. atmo atmospheres. Okay. Yeah. So this is where this. we are going. Right now we are six. I think we can also measure the size of stunt by imaging. Uh, yeah. So this uh, is like this three has nicely opened up. So we'll pull no. back and then we can go high pressure. It's a six on. Yeah. So that's okay. So distally we are not had to worry about. We had to worry about at two o'clock. Yeah. Really yeah. If not, then we have the IVL still again. If you want to do a little more. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Here. This is a 3.5 vessel, correct? No. That's where our balloon was. Yes. IVL balloon was. And here we're going to 12 atmosphere. Nicely opened. Now we opened. Yeah. 12. Yeah, it's open. open. Yeah. yeah. So one to one actually has hey, do, opened that. Would you uh, like LED. to? Would you like? Would you like to take two orthogonal views to just confirm, or 
ఉంటుంది So I always tell that yes we the, to get the best result you'll put a stent 2.25 but in this particular case with the age and patient so many conditions and who knows we may have to stop the uh, although we waited actually 2 months after the first procedure to make sure patient tolerate a uh, combination of uh, noac as well as a uh, uh, clopidogrel which she did uh and uh, so i think it will be reasonable but to me since it's a 2.25 mm vessel and everything is in the led if we can just come out with the yeah. uh, without just uh, opening the ostium of the diagonal reasonably with less than 30% residual i think will be good enough good if you can go mm. okay no okay. oh yeah but so okay. key is that a very tight lesion there so in that case yeah, we can get a 2.5 the... yeah we want a 2.5 12 uh, high pressure or compliant mm. for the diagonal also the uh, correct calcium yeah. of the lad yes. is probably not allowing mostly, it that is, is yeah. excluding yes yeah, yeah. and not allowing us to go to the side branch and this wire got disrupted oh i think we can get a two or dot let's well, see again yeah, okay it's gone okay, yeah, we go a little yeah. slow now okay yeah, good okay and then many It, times uh, also the wire could have been entangled side branch wire yeah, yeah so yes. down it's a 2.25 It even a wire wire bias down. also it's a 2.5 uh, 6 not uh, 2.5 2 to 5 2.5 wolverine Two okay. five Wolverine. Yeah. yeah, go back again here at this level. Don't go crazy pressure and dissect. Six it. eight, huh? Good. Okay. So always uh, do a scene so you document that the ostium is well opened yeah. because the Achilles heel of all the bifurcation is the ostium, aorta ostial as well as non aorta ostial. So here, let's see now how it looks. go okay go back. so far looks we can good. go little more pressure no let's open the diagonal with little more i would not so now oh, we'll will not go you no, want to go yeah. perfect and dissect it no it's not dissect now you want to have a stent strategy yeah. again the what stent we are using now we are going to 8 atmosphere 8 to 10 good okay let's see the play, picture last one yeah we don't take any more picture I think 48 will cover. OCT gave around yeah. OCT gave around 43 mm yep. length. So 48 will be okay. Are you okay 30 yeah. 48? Yeah. Approximately 3.5 huh? post dial test. Yeah. That's right. 3. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And get a 3.5 uh, 15 high pressure balloon. Now question very important. Do we need to put any stent in the diagonal now? and what do you I want think, to do? see uh no yeah i i feel we can do a provisional side band stunting here good beautiful okay okay so we fully agree with your plan it's out so again entangled i think this wire i see wire and is out the wire That's is out then leave it leave it right now leave it because okay. putting it may cause dissection we may be not needed at all okay leave it leave it 
Yes, sir. Wire entangled quite a bit happening in this vessel. Calcific, not uncommon, despite having a <coughs> seven French guide catheter, which we have. No, the entanglement is happening at the level of the lesion. As you know, it is heavily calcified. We have crossed multiple cracks. So, that's not uncommon in calcific lesion that this happens. Good. Okay, let's go. So, we are going Even with the trio, right? Trio. Yeah, trio. Yeah. 3 o 48 synergy and the reason we took 3 o is where distal LED is 3 o. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the proximal part we will post dial it. Yep. You okay. are saying something? It's been, yeah, it's been even our experience, you know, many times cutting balloons and uh, this OPNNC balloons, they pull the wire out. Yeah. So. Yep. <clears throat> Very common. Yep. Ay, ay, ay. This is too long. I think I have to put a 38. Yeah, we can go to 38. That's fine. Go back to promise 38. Look at yeah, this. It's very Wait long. Too long. Look at that. But I think take OCT, yeah, OCT, sh OCT, sh OCT showed uh, 42. OCT said 42 yeah. millimeter, 42. No, no, no. This is yeah. too long. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Distally also, SS, we are like... Yeah, uh, so message a little bit thin. Yeah, we don't need. No, 30 millimeters. Promise 38. No, this should come out. I don't yeah, think we should yeah, put yeah. that long. This is like 10 millimeters yeah. distally that... We don't need the... And that area was completely normal. After yes. the second diagonal, that area was completely normal. Mm. So I think that's okay. Uh, we go back to 38 and with the 38 is same promus elite. That's what we used, uh, as I mentioned. You on said the a 43 on the OCT? Normal to normal is like, yeah, 42. Uh -huh. So one okay. advantage with iOS is basically you can even mark uh, here also we can mark with core registration, but uh, uh, we can do it repeatedly, you know, just to mark your reference areas if there is any doubt and, uh, you know, and then to take a stunt. And if need to be, you can put a short stunt proximally. That's no problem. Yeah. Eight I millimeters. We are so, good yeah. here. Yeah. 38. You want to take a picture? Okay, okay, go. Okay. No, we are Everybody absolutely agrees? okay. Yeah, 38. We, are yeah, we don't yeah, need any more. Yeah. It's okay. fine. Okay. Okay, we are going up. Going up to 16 atmosphere. No, distal is not. No, 16. 3-0. It's a 3-0. Down. 3-0. It's a 3-0 yeah. stand. Yeah, which is fine. Too big. No, but you have the vessel that we know. Okay, 12 atmosphere now. Okay, down. Get us a 3-5. 20. We have, we have it. right? We have it, okay. yeah. 15. 3.515 I have. Because remember, for just the yeah. proximal segment 3.5 we do. But we got 15 here. Okay, take a picture. Okay. Let's see what the fate so, of the diag. Yeah, EKG yeah. looks good. Okay. So pre far so good. So we are saying pre it. and post looks so good. Yeah. So question is very important. A lot of people will try to do FFR and this we are not needed. We learned that from the DK crush, uh, uh, DK crush trial, actually six. Right. So basically showing that the FFR guidance of the side branch doesn't help you much uh, and you just decide based on the angiogram or EKG changes. The subtotal patient yeah. has EKG changes, chest pain, that case you go back, otherwise leave it. Because biggest price, no matter what you do, kissing balloon and so, you do destroy the architecture of the stent. The struts, yeah. maybe a little uh, deep, you know, polymer injury. So I try, we, more and more data have come that unless necessary, don't go after the side branch. And in the last side branch, you go with the planned two stent strategy. I'm okay, going up box. now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Can we ask Ready our imaging guy to show osteal LED whether to really stunt it or leave it? Yep. Okay. Oh, uh, this, uh, this case? Yeah. See the yeah, osteo? Yeah, okay. Yeah, good. okay. Yeah. See, show the uh, crossfire plug at the osteo, but it looks like the area is like okay. around the four. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Down. Maybe, maybe so, MLA is four. Is, yeah. uh, what is the MLA there? So, like here, so this is, I can see this circle okay. from uh, two so o'clock. Go to we'll the we'll do the OCT says, now. Yeah. yeah, like this. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh, like 3.5 or something. Yeah. So, 3. the osteo LED. Nice. Yeah, so, so far, so good. So, LED is only 3.5 osteum. Osteo LED. Yeah. By OCT. So, you know, I think... Let's do the OCT again. Yep. Let's do the last part of the OCT. 
Okay, if you're done early, hmm? oh, no David. need to continue. Yeah. Good. Huh? Okay. Now we are good. So I think uh, ML8 Austin is uh, 3.4 and uh, there must be a huge block area too. Now other way could be that you can area? finish the FFR in the end. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, very focal. Yeah, Austin Lee and Yeah, it's very focal. Austin Lee, yeah. the question is clear. No, on the OCT F4. Yeah, I was so question is the same. OCT of 4, I, you know, there's always a difference in terms of the lumen IVAS versus OCT. The, should it be a... 4 or should be 3.5 or 3 we know that with the IVAS it's 4 the okay. with the OCT we there are some data to show that maybe it's a 0.5 is smaller mm. and so but anyway you know uh, we'll decide let's do this if we come uh, we yeah. can always make that decision um, by doing the uh, FFR or so physiologically to see and that will be basically just for the uh, Austral LED <clears throat> this looks good. Yeah, good clear. Let's I'm going to go in a little bit. Okay. Better now? Yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah, great image. I think angiographically oh, yeah, looks I would good. leave that LED alone now. Don't because remember, yeah. more you do, then you start having some plaque shift in the left main into the circumflex. The, oh. This I would definitely, I don't think even we need to do FFR here. No. Okay, but let's see our yeah. stand things. Yeah. So I check detail. Okay, let's read the, we'll take a picture in the caudal view. So this is the distal edge and this is the plug. Wait one edge. second, for, we'll, let's take a caudal oh. picture then we'll come no, to we you. Took it out. I check first huh? the proximal edge. That is out? Yeah, normal position. No, no, no. We'll expand it. I think proximal is perfect. And through the stent, uh, yeah, we'll expand it. We'll expand it. And go to the distal yeah, good, edge. Good, good lumen areas. Yeah. Yeah, great. And this yeah. edge there is, is also some no complication. Okay, ready? Uh, there is some malar position that is expected no. at the sites of calcium to normal vessel overlap. No, you can do this. Okay. Yeah, That's fine. It's a good. Because of the a uh, lot of like concentric calcium, like out of fracture. Yeah. Dissect? No. Where? Almost, I think, a well up post. Ladies, no. There's the branch. I think See, it's yeah. acceptable. OCD, nothing is there. OK. Good. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I think there's no dissection. I think it's perfect. OK, go back. Uh, mm. Come come back at the level 45. No, 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 no. Between 45 to 50. Oh, there, there, there. At yeah, the like level, here. yeah. Like yeah. there. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, well, uh, that, that's a fla <laughs> fracture uh, behind a uh, stent. No, no, no. Pull back. Is there some uh, malopposition at 42? Exactly 40, 42. Okay, so yeah, don't, don't go too fast. I'm sorry. Like here? You mean the 42 is here? No, uh, no, 38. Come 30, back okay, to 38. So, yeah, right there. A little yeah. bit there. 37. Yeah, no, come yeah, back. Here is a, like a concentric classified part, but the area is more than 5.5. Area is, looks like uh, 5.6. Go to 37, 36. Okay, go to this. Uh, like here? Okay. Yeah. That's okay, right? That's okay. Yeah, this is branch. Branch, fine. Yeah, and uh, this yeah. is fracture. Yeah, um, because of this fracture, the stent is expanded. Okay. Yeah. I mean, clearly. The I mean, stent... angiographically, it looks excellent. But once you're done imaging, you just uh, you know would like to see it again, just to be sure. Okay, now come back to the proximal LED but where the question was. Yeah. yeah, looks good, right here. So now this is the Austel uh, LED. Uh, okay. Almost same. They it show the like LED is 3.6. 3.9. 3.69. 3.69. Yeah. Okay. Leave See, it. Angiograph angiographically, it looks good. Yeah. Yeah. So I there is some okay, malaposition in OCT. Uh, I mean, that's no. fine. That will anywhere remain even if we post dilate because of its location on calcium to normal uh vessel transition so i think it's a good result mm -hmm. a fantastic result yeah you want to take one more picture we are done i took the guide out okay good yeah we don't need any more yeah. yeah so okay so with that note uh now any we want to show anything else uh, here no if they have any questions audience yeah. have any questions 
Uh, I think, uh, let me check. Damodar, could, could you please check uh, questions? Yeah, just checking, sir. So our total contrast use was 140. That's with uh, three runs of OCT. Fluoro time of 13 minutes, but air karma only about one. Damp <clears throat> of uh, 54. So as you know that all those things are reportable uh, parameters nowadays uh, uh, in the during our angiography and uh, those are very important uh, tracking. Uh, so there are some questions. Uh, yeah. There's some yeah, questions you can, Yeah. Ask how questions, be, please. Uh, so Zakar is asking how good will be uh, Wolverine 3 o in such cases? Yeah, I would say that because of only question is because I we did OCT, it was concentric calcium. The Wolverine may or may not work and may then cause some more dissection. So I think the question is yes, if you don't have IVL cost wise, then I would just say go with the high pressure. Who says that the calcific arc you cannot break with the high pressure? So yes, Wolverine is a one choice or if the cost issue is the high pressure, but uh, preferably because of the circular, <coughs> near circular calcium in that mid LED area, it's better to go with the IVL or atherectomy. Routinely, not for this case today, we wanted to show some uh, new uh, techniques which are happening and that is where we showed the IVL as a primary modality. But uh, in our lab, this kind of case usually will get a 1.75 rota bar followed by a high pressure balloon dilatation for the main vessel. If balloon does not expand, then we'll do a Wolverine or IVL. IVL, yeah. yeah. Uh, so one more question. Uh, uh, what is the can we have depth in diagonal? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. So only question limitation here in United States is that we do not have a drug coated balloon yet. It's not available except in peripheries. So coronaries are not available. I know there's some data to support that in the side branch. If you are not stenting, probably drug coated balloon is better. Yes, the day it is available in this kind of case. If you're putting a stent, then probably doesn't matter. If you're not putting a stent, I would say drug coated balloon will have a lower restenosis compared to cutting balloon. So yes, if it is available, you put a 2.5 drug coated balloon in the side branch uh, and then you stent across. Yes. Absolutely, very good point and very good approach, yes. Uh, why not kissing balloon? I think you have answered this, sir. No. Why not definitely, definitely do not. Reason is, we learn, and when this patient comes back with re no matter how good you have done optimization, they come back at the same area. Because why I personally believe, and that is, has been data from even Excel trial, uh, in a, when you stand across and there was not a bifurcation lesion, you actually did a kissing balloon, because there was a little pinch, they had more trouble. Slightly higher even stent thrombosis and maybe, I mean, p-value was 0 0.07. But more importantly, that you definitely break the architecture of the strut or integrity of the struts as well as some polymer. So therefore, unless it is necessary because of chest pain, EKG changes or timmy flow low, then only you go with a kissing balloon. Routine kissing balloon, multiple trials have shown is of <coughs> no benefit. And I think the, don't do a FFR because I think FFR itself by wiring, you may dissect some time. And secondly, FFR guided strategy in the DK crush 6 didn't make any difference. I think, uh, I mean, I just want to highlight some of the apps that we have. Most of these questions that's being asked has been shown. I think the big, uh, the app that will really go with this case will be the calcificate where, uh, you know, how to manage calcific lesion. There we do mention that when you have moderate to severe calcium, like this case, um, you know, ideally a thorectomy, but we know that it may not be available in every part of uh, the world. High pressure balloon, yes, if not, go with any kind of scoring balloon that is available to really make sure that that, uh, you know, calcium is taken care. Um, going back to the side branch, of course, we have the bifurcate and there we have clearly made it that, uh, you know, provisional stenting majority of the time, unless your uh, side branch is a large size and has a significant lesion where we are talking more than 80% that you know you want a dedicated two stent uh, strategy. Otherwise, you know, provisional stenting works well here. And if you see what I said, pre-post looks the same. The post is still about 70%. Uh, side branch, but more important, no EKG changes, no chest pain, timiflow normal. So we don't need to go back. 
um, and uh, we already saw wiring the side branch had some issues and even after stenting we may have issues of wiring of the side branch in this particular case so though if those three criteria are met you don't need to go back to the side branch and kiss okay. Doctor, there was a third the question branch. yes rewiring of side branch which type of wire should be preferred yeah the wiring of the side branch what we used here today is a polymer jacketed uh, fielder wire we have other app for that that the guide wire app uh, saying which wire should go for the side branch ideally so though there is uh, some controversy that polymer jacketed hydrophilic <laughs> wire should not be used for the side branch it's the use of uh, the uh, which is e easy to get into the side branch majority of the time is the fielder uh, i mean whisper which are all polymer jacketed uh, it is a polymer jacket as well as hydrophilic coating when you have the hydrophilic coating <coughs> it's much easier to get into the side branch if there is uh, you know uh, tight lesion heavy calcium difficult to get rarely we go with the stiffer wires so which are the specialty wires that are used for a cto so that you can make some different special curves and get into the side branch but majority of the time workhorse wire whatever your workhorse wire is for the main branch and the fielder whisper for the side branch and you can jail them so there is another question is that can you jail the hydrophilic wires answer to that is yes we are done in thousands and thousands of cases without any problem no, no, no. so you can wire definitely wire uh, the, the jail whether hydrophilic yes. or non hydrophilic wire yes. and make sure careful that wire is not looped second you are not in the radio opaque portion of the wire because then it will have a tough time to pull back can create a trouble and rarely if there is a problem you can advance the balloon to the proximal part of the vessel and to pull the jailed wire but jailed wire comes very easily i know there are some papers to show that a hydrophilic wire may have a, some coating removed because of uh, some damage occurs but i think that's more of a theoretical we have never seen a practical issue and jailed wire in our lab in let's say last 20 years we have done <coughs> maybe 20 uh, 30000 times uh, wires have been left Uh, many times uh, two wires have been left with, with, behind the stent struts but they come out without any clinical problem um, or you know maybe uh, if you see under the electron microscopy you might see a little damage but no clinical event yeah, yeah one 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 quick app is available mm, yes go yeah go one ahead. quick caution in this part of uh, you know subcontinent reuse i mean reuse is another thing you know a reused hydrophilic wire is always dangerous to jail most often it happens you know that coating will go off in a reused wires yeah yeah so no but I, again there are some literature also i mean this question comes all the time for the hydrophilic wire and so and why say that yes i am aware of the literature there was a paper about 2 years ago in jack intervention uh, looking into the coating issue and particularly if you use a used wire maybe a little different but i can tell you particularly us in our lab we do not ever hesitate to leave the hydrophilic wire in the side branch and that is supported by the clinical results that we never never had any trouble and and i can tell you um, um, i think we showed you complicate so this complicate is a web app where uh, all the complications of the cath lab have been discussed with case studies we have over 700 angiograms okay and cases the various complications that we see in the cath lab and one of them is uh, you know breaking of the wire in the coronary arteries um, you know when do they uh, they often break um, very rare when people have done rotational atherectomy when with the wire in the side branch but more often is putting your workhorse wire in the side branch jailing it in a calcific lesion and then when you're trying to remove the uh, wire the we have that case study saying that that wire will break so that's why i think having experience and having done so many thousands of cases that we have no hesitation in using you know polymer coated uh, jacketed hydrophilic wire it's uh, very easy to use uh, leave it in the side branch and they come back easily but workhorse wire which is usually bmw run through when you <coughs> leave in the side branch and later on when you're trying to remove it there have been cases where the part which is uh, you know the dark portion of the wire that often uh, breaks and uh, stays in the side branch 
more of the guide wire is in the guide wire app or uh, it's uh, you know we have website also you can go there there are uh, over 130 uh, coronary guide wires that are available and the properties of these guide wires and when to use the guide wire in which particular kind of cases everything has been discussed there so it's a, a great uh, uh, educational uh, uh, you know apps that we have created and they are free to be downloaded yeah so i think it's a great great demonstration of uh, uh, calcium and you know the strategy how we have to, to use a strategy based on oct so yeah damod any more questions yeah few more sir hmm. uh, in oct how to differentiate between block shift versus side branch occlusion so if you really have to understand can you go and show the diagonal we <laughs> we have uh, it's a, we uh, so ideally uh, that is you know angiographic diagnosis if you really have to understand what side branch what is happening in the side branch you there's th uh, two ways of knowing it you have to do the oct of the side branch so which we don't want yeah. to do it but there is a software do we have the software here no no, no right no, no. we don't have they have not incorporated the software there is a way to understand if you see here um 3d oct reconstruction and uh, we have done our trial orbit trial to understand what happens to the side branch ostium after you are done the main vessel intervention so here he is trying to show you the side branch right yeah so just a visual uh, yeah just a just a visual uh, thing and you can see that uh, there is a flow in the side branch right kc yeah yeah it you looks agree looks that on form, not yeah on force you can see that there's a flow if there is no flow uh, you see uh, i don't know right there you can see that it will be covered with a flap and the stent struts yeah. yeah 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 so that's that's how you can make a difference uh, you know, on the oct but uh, we have given them the recommendation the 3d reconstruction of the oct should it's it's offline they have to do it online so that these kind of questions can be answered if you do a main vessel oct can we predict uh, side branch closure uh, but just by looking at the main bra, you know vessel oct but i think this is the, for uh, right now this is what we can make uh, we can analyze based on that you see there's a flow there's no flap or stent strut in front of the side branch we can close the side also Far, yeah, where we that? looked into it, yeah, can show the slide. So key is that the three D, you know, does help um, to see. Um, and uh, no, show the new one, which I just gave you. Uh, so just to say that we have, you know, very methodically, uh, we have studied this aspect of the side branch predictors of side branch closure and what to do. um and of course the debulk definitely cause less of the plaque of uh, the shift and so huh i get the key the key is saying it's on the key where the key it's inside any other questions meanwhile i just now to where the key now i just give you damn mother Yeah, yeah. Any uh, uh, one thing? What should be the size of the balloon in diagonal if you do kissing? Is it one is to one or it is seventy percent size of the diagonal? Ah, uh, <coughs> ideally seventy percent. Uh, for the size of the diagonal, yeah. if you are doing the kissing, yeah. Next, show the next one actually. Yeah, here. Next one, yeah. Now go back. so this is the one uh, the side branch predicts of the side branch closure so uh, two two things we did one was orbit ffr uh, that was a different uh, study i think we don't have the slide yes this is predictor of side branch closure yeah. this was based on the oct study where we did provisional stenting like this case and then uh, then we did analysis of which side branch uh, you know closed and then we based on the oct what's the criteria we came up was that when you have a plaque not here so one good thing about calcium i mean the, this question was asked in the beginning of the case that if you had done rotational atherectomy the chance of a side branch occlusion is lower 
Why? Because we know this you have circular ca calcium, which is uh, you know moderate to severe calcium. So you see the rota bar just goes around. They are getting rid of the calcium, and major of the calcium calcium particles is going to go downstream. That's that's the known mechanism. But when we are doing balloon and cracking, exactly what IVL did, uh, not the uh, it cracks. Okay, that could be the crack and by dissection of the main vessel and little plaque, which usually could be anything, could be calcium, could be lipid under the calcium that will shift into the um, side branch. So exactly what we saw here, not calcium, but if it's a lot of lipid in the proximal area of the uh, side branch, you see the main vessel? In the main vessel, there's a lot of lipid and when you're ballooning, um, that can get into the side branch and that is what this uh, paper that we did uh, said and then that. we have the orbit ffr and uh, basically uh, uh, showed uh, yeah so provisional setting ffr we did uh, on, on this particular case uh, you know after rota or cutting balloon ptca and then side branch compromise occur in 16 cases and then the ffr we did because of you know the, some were gone so in those cases we left it and this was the finding so this exactly this was a offline analysis that we did uh, exactly which we uh, you know um, uh, me and kiski were trying to analyze that you see that area that's a side branch ostium so if your area was anything less than 0.33 then you know the side branch was compromised and why we know the side branch of compromise if you see their roc curve was significant with 0 0.76 millimeters so that is one thing other thing that we also showed that correlated with FFR of 0.66. Other thing that we also showed, if I don't know if you have the slide, the, we can calculate the number of uh, strength struts in front of the uh, side branch. So you, we have strengthened the side branch and you can calculate the number of strength struts that's crossing the side branch. So the number was about between uh, three to four. So like about 3.8 or so strut if it was uh, more than that, then you know we are, uh, you know, it would also cause, cause side branch uh, compromise there. So that also we can do. But this uh, uh, analysis we did offline. So we are working with the company to see this kind of soft care can be uh, included so that exactly the question asked by one of the participants today that by looking at the OCT, can we make a decision that we don't have to do anything to the side branch? Okay, so with that note, if uh, okay, yeah. we end our today's presentation and uh, we will, I'll join you, uh, you start uh, from uh, your presentation, I'll join you in about three, four minutes and thank yeah. uh, to all our participants and thank to both of you, Dr. Sharad and Dr. Damodar uh, for a very lively discussion and hopefully audience loved this, uh, uh, got educational points, uh, this uh, live case and we'll have our theoretical discussion starting, you can start and I'll join you shortly. And thank you yeah. from. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.